Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. What if Anthony Joshua wins? What if he dominates the rematch against Andy Ruiz Jr.? And why I ask and bring this up is it's related to fan perception, which can honestly change in the blink of an eye. I'll drop some thoughts on all this before getting to a little bit of a, a what next scenario later in the video, should Joshua win, because sometimes that sort of stuff can get lost in the shuffle, you know, after immediately after the fight. So I thought I'll bring some of this up now. But in terms of the fan perception side of things, after Anthony Joshua lost in June 2019, the knives were certainly out from a lot of fans, not just his detractors, but fans across the board. And it was clear the way in which he lost, it saw some of his support drop off from the peak of what it actually had been. And that in itself, it's not exactly shocking. Joshua, he's always had a big casual following. So naturally, some of them would have lost faith and drifted off following a loss because everyone loves a winner, right? But the whole post-reaction loss and even the build-up to this fight on December 7th in Saudi Arabia, it really does highlight again fan fickleness and also that old saying, you're only as good as your last fight. And in his last fight, Joshua dropped four times and even accused of quitting in the seventh round. And that's something Andy Ruiz Jr. said to Joshua's face in the promotional tool that is the Gloves Are Off episode. But one loss. It doesn't mean Anthony Joshua can't win the rematch. It doesn't mean it can't be competitive. It doesn't mean he's not a quality fighter. There's some who seem to refuse to give Joshua any credit for any wins in his career, like Klitschko, Parker, Povetkin, Takam, White, and there's others, that somehow he's now, and has been, an absolute no-hoper who's been coasting along, picking up some titles, and basically been gifted everything. Which, to me, is an absolutely crazy way to look at his career and resume with the quality fighters that are on it. And the fact that this rematch is so anticipated, it shows what a good fight this really is. The whole Joshua is nothing narrative. It's also hugely disrespectful to Andy Ruiz Jr., who took down a guy regarded in some fans' minds at the time of the fight as the number one guy in the division. I mean, I think people forget that pretty quickly. There was a decent chunk of fans who had Joshua as the number one. And if Joshua is now nothing or was nothing, how could we give Andy Ruiz Jr. any credit? It really is nonsense. It was a great win over one of the best heavyweights of this past decade. Ruiz was and has been showered with praise for his win, deservedly so, and no doubt would get the plaudits again if he beats um, Anthony Joshua, repeats the result of the first fight. But I get it. Some fans want to have it both ways because it suits their narrative. That's something that they might be pushing because they might be a fan of another fighter or whatever. Or maybe they just don't realize that they're discrediting Andy Ruiz Jr. when they say Joshua is a joke, that he's nothing. But make no mistake, whoever wins this fight, whether by a decision, knockout, you know, if it's a war or even a war of attrition, they deserve credit. Maybe not the sort of bow down to Joshua's feet type credit that he suggested, but, you know, I get what he's saying because in his explanation of saying that stuff, he was saying if Ruiz is now perceived as this beast and unbeatable force in the division, then surely he deserves praise for beating Ruiz. And I think most fans would be willing to give him credit for beating Ruiz, especially now there's a huge number of fans that don't believe he's got a shot in this fight. And part of me thinks that some of the things that have been said into the lead up to this uh, rematch, like the bow down to my feet and other bits and pieces, you know, it is uh, part of the hype. It's the, you know, trying to generate that little bit of extra buzz to push pay-per-view sales, which I'm sure is going to draw strong numbers in the locations where it will be on pay-per-view, especially in the UK, where it's uh, the main event will be on prime time or in prime time, should I say. But getting back on track, should Joshua win? 
expect to see perception shift again and rapidly especially if it's a clinical performance where he really puts the hurt on and i know that there are a number of joshua fans that are expecting and hoping for that sort of performance coming out and dominating ruiz using his attributes to his you know full advantage and you know slowly grinding down wearing down andy ruiz jr with a sort of barrage of punishment over several rounds arguably in that scenario with a win especially a very good win Joshua, he writes a wrong to reclaim his belts, he would probably increase his star power exponentially. It really would be a global story. And especially if it's a real back and forth sort of encounter, which we can only hope for as fans. And Ruiz, he would benefit similarly in fans' minds if, you know, the roles are reversed and he's the one that gets the job done in that sort of fashion and a very good performance. But if Joshua proves the doubt is wrong, looks good in the process and buries the demons from the first fight there will be invariably talk and comparisons with greats from yesteryear who've been in similar situations and i'm sure the one that will come up the most which will be rampant is lennox lewis because obviously lewis he showed that losing and in his case being knocked out twice to unfancied opponents it doesn't mean that you can't continue and build a great career Lewis, in my view, is actually a fighter who's viewed more favorably now. He's more revered now than he ever was when he was fighting. And sometimes time will do do that. Sometimes fighters aren't appreciated as much in the time that they're fighting. But don't be surprised in a win how quickly perceptions will shift and change. And that will also apply to a bad loss. You know, things will shift quickly either way. And in a loss scenario, I'm sure there will be those who will be ready to launch Joshua onto the scrap heap, call for his retirement. But I can only really see a situation like that if it's a devastating loss, say a one round knockout or something similar. I can't really see retirement being an option unless it's something like that. And win or lose, there's going to be big fights for Joshua to chase because of his pull. The fighters, you know, be, will be wanting to chase him for paydays. But he's a guy who's heading into this fight, or at least he's telling us this, that he doesn't expect to lose. That he's prepared, diligent, that he's put the work in. He's been working on his craft, been in the gym relentlessly, a hard camp, tough sparring more sparring than normal and as he says iron sharpens iron and he's been taking shots to the arms shoulders body head to try condition himself for the ruiz rematch so should it all pay off what next because obviously in the initial glow of a win getting his belts back it will quickly turn to that sort of question and we have been hearing for for several weeks now that the winner may actually be forced into a situation of having to drop one of their three belts because two um, mandatories are going to become due. The IBF, it's already been called. Uh, Kubrat Pulev must have his title shot before the end of May 2020. The WBO has been waiting as well. Uh, no mandatory challenges have happened this year. The last one was WBA mandatory in uh, 2018, Joshua versus Povetkin. So mandatories will pile up. And in the case that, you know, it's a choice between the two, WBO or IBF, it would seem logical to me at least that Joshua probably defends the IBF belt if he wins it back, especially because that was the first belt that he ever won, and that was back in 2016. And say they can't manage to keep the the WBO from stripping the title from Joshua if he wins. I'm sure Joshua's promoter doesn't really mind too much because in a way it's a win-win situation either way. Alexander Usyk, who Eddie Hearn promotes, he would be fighting for the vacant belt courtesy of his WBO mandatory status. And the possible opponent at this stage, it would appear to be another matchroom fighter, fourth-ranked Joseph Parker. So in that scenario, you can probably see what would happen pretty quickly. Uh, Usyk and Parker, they fight, and then the winner would look to face uh, Joshua and Pulev. Many would expect Joshua to get past Pulev. Lots of ifs, buts, and maybes, you know, to get to that point. Heavyweight boxing in six months, the landscape would have changed again. It's very hard to predict where things will go, but you can sort of see a roadmap if Joshua wins, but he's got to get that win. And I'm sure even by now, there's going to be screeds of comments proclaiming Joshua just can't beat Andy Ruiz Jr. under any circumstance. It's a fight after all. He's beaten quality opposition before. And he certainly is in this fight. It's not a mismatch, as some people claim. But what if he does beat Ruiz Jr.? 
people have to be open to the possibility of that. Either way, let's hope it's a great fight because we don't often get the big fights at heavyweight that we want. And this rematch, although you know somewhat unexpected, that result back in June, it definitely qualifies as a big fight. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.